Hey everyone, it's Kristen. So today we're going to be talking about the 40s in the Super Ghost Stamp album, the Celebrate the Century, the collaboration with DC Comics. So here's the Meet the Heroes thing and what we're going to be talking about. And the new hero joining us is the Adam. Ray Palmer. You'll see you'll see why later. Like I said, they never do this randomly, really. They always have a reason for, like, sticking a new hero in. And, like, you notice Lobo, he's only been in that one that we talked about. And Aquaman, same thing. Lobo was because of the mismanners to show, like, hey, he's, like, the slob. He's the worst, like, example of manners. Um, and then Aquaman, the Panama Canal, the ocean, so... Like I said, there's always a reason, so you'll see why. <laughs> um, during the 40s, it um, started to go away from jazz more into like a big band swing era. Like more music you could dance to, basically. Um, and like Benny, uh, Glenn Miller, uh, Benny Goodman, um, Duke Ellington still. And just it was just really popular music at the time. Like, you know, it don't mean a thing if it ain't got that swing. 1932 song by a band leader and closer, Duke Ellington. So, it makes sense. Okay. And he's the one basically credited to, um, that came up with the name Swing for the popular era of music. And that's where, you know, swing dancing, you like, you swing your partner and you, like, do the flips and the turns. And, like, I can't do that. I can't dance at all. But it looks fun. <laughs> And, um, yeah, we're talking about the jitterbug. Oh, yeah, Plastic Man. Like, I think they inserted him for just, like, some humor, I guess, because, like, he's, you know, he's, like, um, I mean, you know, Mr. Fantastic, he could stretch and stuff. Um, so, just because, only because he's more famous, I consider Plastic Man, like, a knockoff Mr. Fantastic. Only because more people know who Mr. Fantastic is than Plastic Man. Anyway, sorry. Um, Citizen Kane is called the greatest movie ever made. I honestly have never seen it. I'm not a huge drama person. Um, I prefer like comedies and action movies, especially obviously superhero movies. So I have honestly never seen Citizen Kane. Oh, and I love musicals, um, but I probably should, especially now since it's been in here. And, of course, the, there's Batman because this is all, like, a movie about, like, political intrigue and, like, a man driven in his life, lifelong lust for power. Um, he's, like, a, a newspaper guy. And, look, the Atom, antibiotics, you know, like, little, little microbes. Um, in, in, like, I didn't, I'm sure, like, everyone else knows this, and they're like, duh, but I didn't know that penicillin came from mold. Like, I, I was unaware of that fact that, yeah, penicillin was made from mold. <laughs> um, my grandmother is actually allergic to penicillin, so she has to wear one of those, like, medical alert bracelets all the time because she's, she's allergic. Um, so yeah, she has to wear that, um, medical alert bracelet to let everyone know that she's, uh, allergic to penicillin. But yeah, like I said, <laughs> I didn't know that penicillin was made from mold. Interesting. Okay. And again, Wonder Woman, Women in Wartime. Um, and the stamp for this is, there you go, Rosie the Riveter, which is a pretty famous, like, iconic, um, image. It was, uh, the cover on the Saturday Evening Post. Um, basically, he was talking about how the fact that, you know, women can do it. They can fill in for men while they're, um, away at war. Like, uh, women were, like, in factories making airplanes and, and tanks and, um, cars and, uh, ships and everything. Um, they were also joined the military and they were also overseas, um, in supportive roles like uh, medicine and um, communications 
like it was just saying like they can like women stepped up and they stepped in and um you know unfortunately of course when the men got back then the women got pushed out that kind of makes me think of that movie a league of their own where you know all the men went, went off to war so that uh they had the the women's baseball team because the people that were still like at home you know needed some kind of um entertainment so to speak but i mean i love that movie like tom hanks there's no crying in baseball that's like one of the most iconic lines ever um honestly in movies sorry i'm having an issue <laughs> with my hair um okay so Another a case of a vice president becoming president, Harry S. Truman. He was president, or he was vice president for 82 days when President Roosevelt died. Um, so he was not not really ready to step into that role, but at the same time, he had like a plaque on his desk that says "The buck stops here," meaning like, "Hey, I will take all the responsibility and I will take all the blame in case." something goes bad but he was ultimately responsible for deciding that uh it would take take um bombing japan in order for the war to end i mean he was very reluctant about it but he still he was like yeah it was you know my decision and um it actually was funny because he ran for a re-election in 1948 and um like the paper, or the stamp is him holding up the paper that says Dewey defeats Truman because that's who he was running against, um, Thomas Dewey. But he actually ended up beating him, and we know now that the papers print both sides, um, so that they have that edition ready. But they, he was predicted to lose so bad that they had already had that ready, and they were like, just you know, they already printed it and everything because they really thought. He was going to lose. <laughs> they had no hope. It kind of reminds me of what happened recently. Um, again, Robin, kids, babies, you know. Um, the baby, just about the baby boom, how, you know, everyone, soldiers got married before they went off to war, and then they came home, and then they had kids, and then they had, you know, like the GI Bill, so they had money to, like, get uh, an education, get a better job. Um, actually money for like a down payment on a house and then they had a family and so that's just what that's talking about because um, it says from 1946 to 1964 75 million babies were born in the US um, so yeah um, <laughs> that's a lot <laughs> um, and then they're talking about slinkies which, you know, everyone knows what a slinky is. Like, um, Ace Ventura, you know, everybody loves a slinky. Go, slinky, go. Where he, like, puts it down all the stairs of the monastery, all the steps. And he gets to the last step and he's like, no. And he, has, he wants to start all over. But anyway, that's what it makes me think of every single time I see a slinky or hear the word slinky. It's just ingrained. It'll never go away. But pretty much, like, it's just saying, like, how it was a very inexpensive, you know, kid's toy. And uh, just, like, inexpensive but very, like, classic. Like, it just, um, it could be made, you know, it can be made of plastic, metal, all kinds of shapes, sizes, colors. I mean, it just, it's, I mean, it's a very cool, simple toy that you can just play with. And it'll, you can It'll entertain you for, well, depending on who you are, hours. Um, and this was just talking about how um, the U.S. was becoming influenced by other countries in, like, their design of architecture and their style. They weren't just sticking to what they knew. They were actually branching out. <sighs> yes, abstract expressionism. Basically, you know, like Jackson Pollock, where they take the paint and they throw it on the canvas, and they're like, yes, this is how I feel when, like, I'm happy or I'm angry or this, oh, this makes me angry 
looking at these colors, blah, blah, you know, that sort of thing. I never, I never got it. I didn't get abstract art either, but that's just me. <laughs> I'm sorry. So, uh, and this is talking about the play, um, A Streetcar Named Desire by Tennessee Williams. He's one of the most famous uh, playwrights in America. And uh, basically he's famous because his plays were actually treating people as complex characters. Like they had, you know, set against the backdrop of the modern world. They had feelings and they had um, sensitivities. And I just, uh, like, I'm sorry, but like, uh, look at Robin's hair there. And then look at it there. So you can tell like different artists to have different styles and interpretations of the characters. It's very interesting. This I'm sorry, but this hair, this hair is terrible on him. It uh, just uh, doesn't even look like Robin. I'm sorry. It just doesn't. <laughs> um, oh, Jackie Robinson. Like, it, the, to me, this story was really interesting because I didn't know all the details. Um, apparently, this, um, the president of the Brooklyn Dodgers, um, Branch Rickey, he was scouting and um, in the black-only leagues, um, and he found many outstanding athletes, but he knew he needed, like, a very special one in order to... Um, be able to integrate, like start that task of integrating um, the baseball league, major baseball league. And so he, um, basically, like he called uh, Jackie in there for an interview. Um, you know, he questioned him and he like, you know, threw one question after another at him. And but basically what he did, what this guy did, the president of the um, Dodgers, he started shouting racial slurs in the middle of his meeting with Robinson. And Robinson managed to keep his temper and his dignity. So Ricky then saw this man, this is the man, because he did it on purpose to test him, which... I can't even imagine, like, doing it on purpose to test someone. That would be terrible. But, like, to basically t be able to con compose yourself, like, contain yourself, I just, I can't even imagine. I I can't do that. I just, that, I mean, that's probably why one of the reasons Jackie Robinson is so famous and so beloved is that he just was such a man of exemplary, uh, I can't talk, um, just, this amazing character. I mean, he couldn't. He just was such a great example. Is what I'm trying to say. <laughs> and then they talked about. Um, the start of TV. How they were. Uh, that started to become possible. For more and more people. Um, in the very beginning. They just broadcasted like radio shows. With the original actors. Um, uh, basically, it says TV ownership rose from 6,000 in 1945 to about 1 million in 1944. Um, yeah, so, wow, I mean, that's just crazy that um, we just, you know, like, it says video killed the radio star, well, like, TV killed radio, and all this stuff, um, that song. <laughs> anyway, the next one is going to be about the 50s. Most people know kind of somewhat about the 50s because of Grease or some kind of movie like that. So anyway, that would be fun. That's one of my favorite decades. But anyway, I hope you join me. Bye.